Well, North Korea fired another intercontinental ballistic missile overnight. According to Japanese officials, the missile had enough range to reach the U.S. mainland. The long-range missile landed near Japanese waters off the coast of Oshima Island, which is south of Tokyo. It's the second major weapons test North Korea has launched this month. Vice President Harris was quick to condemn Pyongyang's latest test during the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Thailand. This conduct by North Korea most recently is a brazen violation of multiple UN security resolutions. It destabilizes security in the region and unnecessarily raises tensions. We strongly condemn these actions and we again call for North Korea to stop further unlawful destabilizing acts. Let's bring in CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Jang now for more on this. Weijia, welcome. Uh, first, how is the White House responding to North Korea's overnight missile launch? Well, in addition to what we just heard from the vice president, the White House is certainly condemning this missile launch, also expressing concern about it because this one uh, is so powerful. Of course, missiles and launching missiles are not new for North Korea. In fact, we have seen um, a ramp up by Kim Jong Un in recent months. But this one, um, because it has the capacity to travel so far, is especially alarming. Of course, North Korea saying that it is in response to those military exercises between the U.S. and South Korea that have been going on for decades that it has objected to. Um, so this is sort of uh, an ongoing cycle. But this one, again, uh, Michelle and Lilia, feels a little bit different because of the scope of the launch. But so far, um, you know, no retaliation, no conversations that the White House is detailing, although we did just hear from uh, John Curry Kirby from uh, the National Security Agency, who, who talked about the fact that, you know, the, the door is still open from the United States to have a dialogue with North Korea. The ball is sort of in their court right now to, to come to the table and have discussions. But North Korea has so far not responded. Of course, this is sending a big message that the White House is not taking lightly. Weijia, I also want to ask you about another development. The Biden administration says that Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is immune from lawsuits when it comes to his role in the death of yeah. Jamal Khashoggi. So what exactly does that mean, Weijia, and what led to this decision? So this was um, a finding after Jamal Khashoggi's fiance filed a civil suit against Saudi Arabia and its officials. Of course, you might remember that last year, the U.S. Department of Intelligence, the intelligence community assessed that the crown prince, also known as MBS, approved the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, who, um, just a reminder to our viewers, was an American journalist who was brutally murdered in Saudi Arabia. However, um, at the time, the president said that there would be no direct penalties for MBS uh, because that would go against precedent for someone um, who is uh, such a critical role, a, a, a leader um, for a nation that, you know, we do direct business with for better or for worse. Um, this is a little bit tricky because before, MBS would not have had immunity, even the option of it, because he was not an official head of state, head of government. Um, but then just a few days before the administration was supposed to make this ruling last month, uh, MBS's father, the king, promoted him to prime minister, which changed his status, which did uh, make it possible for him to receive immunity. Of course, human rights advocates say they see right through this, and that was a move just to protect him. Um, but the administration here says, you know, that is, uh, you know, what they're going by based on precedents. And so at this point, he does have immunity. Uh, I want to show you something that Jamal Khashoggi's fiance tweeted, um, some very harsh words uh, for the president, if we have it here. She tweeted, Biden saved the murderer by granting immunity. He saved the criminal and got involved in the crime himself. Let's see who will save you in the hereafter at POTUS. So that is um, extremely uh, clear messaging from Khashoggi's fiance about how she feels uh, about this decision. Yeah, a clear technicality there. Weijia Jang, thank you so much. Sure.